Hello and welcome to this virtual production vlog. My name is Matt Workman and we are shooting in our virtual spaceship today. This is a live rendered background. Let me show you here. Oh, not the best camera move, but I don't have an operator with me right now. But it's a live rendered 3D set in Unreal Engine, and we're also doing the compositing, which I think looks pretty good. It took me a couple days. All in Unreal Engine, and this is like pretty much what we're looking at right now, quality wise, as far as my virtual production studio. So in this vlog, we're gonna talk about the changes I made to my camera system. Uh, we'll talk about what I've learned about live keying and lighting. And we'll end by showing some uh, handheld operating shots so we can see a little bit more dynamic movement, look at the tracking and the sync and also the keying all at once. And most importantly, what does this look like? How does, you know, indie virtual production look at the current state that I'm in? I think there's still room for improvement, but I think the results are pretty awesome. Looking forward to sharing them with you. So what the new pipeline is, is that we shoot through the Blackmagic G2 and we output the footage through SDI back to Unreal Engine. Unreal Engine does the 3D rendering of course and it does the live composite which we'll talk about in a little bit. And then we output the live composite back out through the deck link through HDSDI or SDI and then we put it into here. So I can see the live composite now through this monitor and I actually record from it as well. Now there is a little delay, I haven't measured it, it does feel like 8 12 frames, something like that, it's not great. So you'll see in later demos if I move, there's a delay with this, but in most cases, I'm, I'm okay. I can, I can compensate. And it's really obviously helpful to see the final composite right there. And for me, because I am camera department, you know, DP, former camera assistant, I wanna keep as much camera department as possible. You can record uh, SDI onto your computer, onto all sorts of stuff, but I wanna record SDI right here, like I'm just rolling the camera. Keeps everything very camera department and it keeps things easier in my head. I'm not gonna have to go roll on the computer and go over there. All I have to worry about in this virtual production setup is recording onto this monitor and then when I'm done, I take out the SD card and I have the footage. It's almost like Unreal Engine isn't there, right? So I like to keep all the computer stuff kind of separate but keep the film stuff all together. And this makes me really happy to be able to record, see it, do waveforms, put in like frame guides, hit stop, give the media to the DIT or the downloader, who is me in my case, but it keeps it all very camera department. So I think this is like a really good way to go about it. Okay, so this is standard shoulder style operating uh, and the monitor really needs to be like this far out. So this extension, I'm putting it like all the way at the end of the top handle extension and it just gets the monitor where I can see it like this. If I want to go into like hip shooting like this, which most people would probably use like an ergo cine or something like that, I actually just grab it by the side handle here, which is like nice and strong now. I'm holding this and I'm pushing the this like into my uh, arm here. It's like a gun stock pretty much. And I just go like this. Uh, I usually would flip the monitor and I can still pull focus with my thumb here. I don't know if you can see that, but it's not ideal, but you know, we're indie here. We don't have a follow focus. I don't have a focus puller with me, but I can get it done, right? So if I'm shooting hip style, I'll go like this, and I can't show you in this frame, but you can imagine if I'm doing low angles, I'll just hold it like this, or one hand like a skateboarder, and I'm pretty much set up and comfortable to be able to switch between these as I need to, uh, with kind of minimal setup or need for assistance. With cinema rigs, when you're switching between different modes, it's like easy rig, no easy rig, and you know, it, it takes a couple more people usually to kind of get it set up. This, uh, I'm pretty much good to go. So that's the handheld setup. Let me put this back on the tripod here. So that's the demo of the rig. A lot of it was for like cine ergonomics so that I could operate this. I'm gonna do a lot of handheld, some tripod, and I'm probably gonna get a jib or slider next. We have our primary record monitor his, uh, right here. We can see the final image. We have room for the tracker and we have room to grow as we add wireless follow focuses, uh, other computer boxes as needed for tracking. And we have our battery once we need to power everything. So this pretty much gets you up and running for indie virtual production but we took the G2 and re-rigged it so that it can scale into, I would say like upper indie <laughs> production. I think once you end up on like a big virtual production shoot, you probably switch to an Alexa or a camera of that caliber. Bigger support, you know, 19 mil, everything's gonna get even bigger, but this is still 15 mil and you know, pretty slim in indie. Hello and 
and welcome to Unreal Engine. This is our virtual set. It's live. It's basically a video game. It's pretty awesome. You don't have to render this, so to speak, frame by frame. You just look all around you. Real-time stuff is awesome. So this is our live video, and I'm going to give you a quick overview on how this works. If you want the really detailed version, I will link Andy Blondin's tutorials in the description below. This is a quick run-through. So to do this, we're going to be using the Composure plugin. You go up to Editor, Plugins, turn on Composure, boom. So this Composure plugin is basically like After Effects. So this is a new composition, and we're going to add a new layer, right? And I'm going to add a media plate in this case. So this is your... Uh, first layer here on top and we're just going to go and select my live video feed This is live video coming in through the black magic card and now we're going to key it So I'm going to delete these kind of like default filters here and we're going to be using the uh, new color difference keyer here So I'm going to write color diff There it is yours might be called something different uh, But there we go I'm going to just change a couple settings here both the pre-pass click on this thing and we're going to just kind of drag and average these colors together click and drag except uh, I'm going to do a little bit of a threshold here to kind of crush that down and you can view just the alpha which is helpful and I'm going to change the alpha offset here like this to, com to completely make this white. Uh, I could probably go even further. You have to tweak this depending on what you're shooting and there's some other things as well. This will get you pretty far. So if I turn these back on like this, uh, we've now cut out, oops, cut out our character, right? Really nice key. There's a lot of tweaking you can do to, to do it better, but uh, that's a good start. Uh, the next thing you want to do is add another filter, basically. These are like filters the way I think about it. So we're going to add another filter here. And to pick your filter, you go here, and I'm going to write dispel uh, average uh, green screen one, that one. So that kind of kills all the green spill on them on the foreground. Does, uh, does a lot really helpful. And because of the, uh, the way that the color comes in from the black magic camera, it's a little bit um, flat, right? So I'm going to kind of grade it. So I'm just going to add another filter or material pass. And the one I want in here... Uh, the way you find that is to go to, let me find this thing, uh, the composure content, materials, and color grading. Yes, this one right here. Drag it in. Or you could type it if you remember the name. And now, for my case, I'm just going to go to gamma and just kind of bring the gamma down like that. Okay? So, essentially, we graded it, we despilled it here, and we keyed it from there. Uh, and you can do this much better if you spend a little bit of time and tweak it, but look at the results we get so far, not bad. So we just want to add one more layer here, and it's going to be a uh, CG layer, which is the uh, CG camera that goes in the background. And uh, we have to give this a material that I am not going to go over how you make said material. Andy's, Andy's tutorials do that as well. Uh, this one should be fine. Uh, hold on. I just need to uh, add it here and drop this into there. Uh, ba boom boom. Uh, we're going to tell it to use media plate one for the top and CG element for the back. And there is our composite. Really quick, super fast composure tutorial right there. Uh, getting the tracking and all that stuff synced together. That is a whole different uh, can of worms there. But that's composure. You can get some nice live composites going. Um, just wanted to show that process really quickly. And the other thing that we are doing now that's new is that if you click the comp itself, you can actually do an output, right? So if I use this, I already have it set up. Uh, if you set this all up, you can output through the deck link, and this is how I get a preview of my comp back at the camera right here. So if I turn this on, I think I can hit preview. Okay, it's not running. You have to be running, turn it on, etc. Maybe if I turn this on and then do it. This is the image that'll go back to the SDI monitor. So here I am shooting a little bit of handheld with the system, testing out the tracking, testing out the keying. Everything looks pretty good. I'm pretty happy with this. Uh, thank you again to my lovely wife, Diana Levine, who is our stand-in because I cannot shoot handheld and film myself. That's not something <laughs> I'm able to do yet. We're able to see that the composite looks really nice. Uh, I think there's some tweaking that could be done, but overall, I, I pretty much feel like she's in this scene. And the tracking, even though we're not getting like perfect time code and perfect syncing from the Vive, I think that for a lot of cases, this is going to be fine.
Okay, so that wraps it up for this vlog. I'm really happy with the live composite, the live tracking, considering that it's a Vive tracker, you know, off the shelf solution, not like super expensive. I think really cool things can be done given just even static shots or just very small camera movements can be done with live rendered backgrounds from Unreal Engine uh, mixed with a composite. Being able to see everything at once, it changes everything. It's, it's kind of inspired me to want to make a short film. I was watching, I always get the name wrong, Love, Death, and Robots. I watched it all at once, so I don't remember the name always. Um, I was watching that series and I was so inspired by it, uh, even though most of it's all CG, or I think it's like all CG, I forget if there's any real people in it, I couldn't tell after a while, uh, it didn't really matter. Uh, that series has really inspired me and I want to make a short film that kind of shows off the tech here, right? Um, I'm not a director, I'm not a writer, but I want to put something together, there's probably going to be robots, I kind of like this spaceship, and there's probably going to be people. Like, just medium shots, I don't have a very big green, uh, very big green screen, but I think really compelling visuals and, and stories could definitely be told using this indie virtual production setup, and I, I'm inspired to kind of work on that. So again, that wraps it up for this. Thanks for hanging out. Uh, if you have more questions and you want to like really get into this, uh, hit us up on the virtual production Facebook group. That'll be linked down below. I'm trying to keep like a big list of gear also in the descriptions. Uh, it's kind of changing constantly. I switch things in and out, but I'm just trying to keep people updated in case you're like, what was that piece of gear? Uh, it should be linked down below. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys on the next one.